We were robbed. Robbed of gold of history! We could have brought casual bullying into competitive bullying. What are you... Five <sighs> minutes. Five minutes is know, all it took. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, Nord takes another W and it seems like DMG is struggling to find their foot on the league. It had some parts of the game where it was mix and match, but it was a snowball nonetheless for Nord. The slowest snowball I've ever seen in my life. I don't know. I don't know what you expected. Game effectively <laughs> over by 23 minutes parlayed into a 35 minute victory. It's classic Nord, Archeron. But when Romeo just hooks into double turret there for zero, that, that was just the okay middle turn. I, I, I don't know, man. We, we, foresee, we foresaw work. that was going to happen. Like, you just like you just don't understand the way that Nord operate. Clean, <laughs> calm, and collected. Every objective picked up. I'm surprised they didn't go for mm. the Elder uh, at the end. Um, but yeah, that that was a very controlled game, I, I think is the polite way to describe it. Maybe could have been significantly faster from North, but as soon as Vashi got that quadra kill, should have been a pentakill, yeah. the, the game was done. Yeah, I mean, that one particular fight changed the entire game, and it definitely could have gone in favor of DMG, right? Um, you just had an instant where Liam Cole just gets autoed by that Nautilus, and once he's stunned there, it's the easiest thing in the world for Wazi to go in and capitalize on it. And once that Akali is 6-1 and one at the end of that fight, mm -hmm. it's very, you can't really foresee them winning fights outside of play, making picks away from the Akali. And they could only do that for so long to get to these group situations where the Akali's going to be all over you. Then eventually the Rumble's fed as well. It all snowballs from there. Very, very slowly, just like Middlecott in his... Um, bold or broke predicted, um, but nonetheless, it was always going into that trajectory. So it got to a point where it was completely sealed, but nonetheless, Nord were not capable to put the seal in the letterbox. Mm. So I want to understand what is keeping Nord from ending games a little bit sooner, because obviously they struggle a little bit for the DMG, and we're talking about the Yoni effect, that maybe a few more minutes, probably 50, would allow him to be immortal. But the idea of if North is not capable of ending these games right now, throughout the entire split, wants to get to playoffs if they get top four and they face the teams that are on playoffs, yeah. things are going to get messy. It struck me that after the mid play off of the Drake loss for the MG, mm -hmm. um, when they successfully got that play, you didn't really see Nord set up multiple lanes ever again for the rest of the game. Um, and when it came to trying to close it, they had like two inhibs down, but nobody was trying to get like the bot inhibitor wave in. No one was trying to secure yeah. the mid inhibitor wave into a flank. These kinds of acceleration plays weren't happening because they felt like they just needed to be grouped. They're correct that they win fights while grouped, but that's why the speed isn't there because they aren't creating multiple points of pressure when they absolutely could against their opponents. There's an obvious compositional thing mm -hmm. happening here. Yeah. Um, there is a loss of anti-dive on their opponents, which could make it harder to 5v5, but the response to that is to set up that wide map state anyway. So this is an issue in this game in a big way, this is going to be a consistent issue in all their other games in a big way, and it will mean that when the wins come for Nord, it comes quite slowly. Um, fortunately, I would have preferred for them to be a loss. Um, I would really like it if a team that I have predicted to win could lose when I need them to lose so I can win the predictions. But unfortunately, we don't live in this world. Shout out to DJ Khalid. We are both suffering from success today. <laughs> <laughs> that took a turn. I was learning and all of a sudden, well, I regret my decisions. I'm like, wait, what, what happened? And that, that's, the, that's the thing. Nord needs to, to, to step up in terms of finishing the games. Or they might give an opportunity to teams that they are on the same level, even if they win the game, to, to come back. So that could come back and bite them uh, uh, later on into the split. But I want to understand who's the MVP because I thought it would be someone, but apparently it's someone else. It is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Correct predictions. Incorrect Wait, hold on. Predictions. Incorrect prediction. Hold on. Unique hold losses. On. <laughs> I got the prediction right. But he got it right. I got it right. Oh my! This is not. Nice. Even when this is right, this is slander. <sighs> Wait, we made this halfway through, or what? He I was right in the end. Oh, that's why I was the player. Of the oh man, he's can't never get the right at the end. He's can't never... get the start these days. Well, it's just never everyone was right. playing on my downfall. 
Uh, didn't happen. Um, I think if there was someone besides myself that really stood out today, <laughs> it's got to be Varshi. Like, he, he was just absolutely gross. We already said it. The quadra kill that he got completely warped the entire direction I'm... of the game. Yep. I think that's good. But I, I, I'm going to be a little bit out there here. I'm also going to give credit to Romeo. Yes, he did delay it a bit further, but that should be a good point for Middlecott. Um, but I True, do feel like goat. whereas Quasi was capitalizing, <laughs> Romeo did set up that play at the end. Yeah. I'd be happy to give it to Wazi uh... as well, though, because obviously the game was over once he did that brilliant bit of capitalization on that Drake. But it was a little bit of a team effort, so I do want to give a shout-out to Romeo, especially because I low-key flamed him at the oh, time. Oh, there she is. <laughs> I was actually not expecting that. So Varshi is the player of the match at the end of it. It's not middle cut. Uh, I mean, we had a conversation with the middle cut's mouse and we have to do this building. It's, it's, just, it's just required at this point. So Varshi is the MVP of North versus DMG, well which leads us to the last game of the day, which is going to be Alliance Creed versus Venom Crest. And now we're talking about the top two teams that were supposed to be undefeatable as soon as we saw them play. Yesterday, they both got beat up, and today is revenge. Obviously, a lot of people are expecting the Lions Creed to be the top-notch team, but Venom Crest has something to talk about, so let's talk about what can we expect from this match. Uh, let's begin with you, Miloko. Uh So I am one of those few people, I guess, that <laughs> is looking at Venom Crest and going, I think they've actually got a shot here. Um, Maybe my prediction was somewhat thinking about the points and now everyone's going to vote for Lion's Green. So if I could get the win here, it actually puts me a little bit higher up in the standings. Um, but I think I've already alluded to it on the broadcast. Um, Lion's Creed, they do look very, very exploitable, particularly when we're talking about um, skirmishes in the river around objectives where multiple lanes are required to collapse. And I think one of the strong <coughs> points that we can say about Venomcrest is these guys do actually play at a unit. It never seems to be just one or two people at a play. They're bringing three, they're bringing four. Zubak leading the charge, but we're seeing Roams coming through from the supports as well. So I think that if Venomcrest don't get blown out um, in the lanes in this game, they've got a very good chance. But I know that there's a, a lot of stock that you need to put into the names on Lions Creed because this is still a very, very star-studded roster. Counterpoint, I think Venom Crest needs to blow them out to get the win, but even if they do blow them out in the early game, Lions Creed, they were the comeback kings in the previous iteration, they can be the comeback kings now, and we've seen from later that being the comeback kings is the way to beat this Venom Crest lineup. So I say, give them that early game, why not, and then let's roll as Lions Creed as five in mid late game, get the collapses we need, show them how it's really done when we get into that state, and then my Boulder Broke will actually survive this one, because I have Lions Creed losing exactly one game, they've lost that, they can't lose another one, or it gets really bad for me really fast, and I need the three versus one in the prediction race on this particular one to go through. If this one doesn't work, then even though Aragon got this one correct as well, as me, it actually ends up being worse off for me overall, so yes. I like to usually ask lane to watch, because I, I think it's really important to where we should pay attention to tell the viewer, hey, this could be the lane that is going to decide this match. And when you look into this match, I don't think it's this that easy, one. especially I, I, mm. after what we've seen yesterday from the jungle, Zubak. Yeah, can I give a combo? Yeah, hit me with a combo. I mean, it would be the 2v2 mid-jungle combo, yeah. because that was the big defining factor of this iteration of Lions Creed back when they were in the NLC. It's a defining factor now, and it is. It is the big pivot point through which these river plays that Middlecourt was talking about are made for Venom Crest. So if Zubak's dropping the ball here, that would be a bit that would be a painful thing. Um, for the rest of Venom Crest to have to deal with, but for Lions Creed, they are uniquely positioned to take full advantage of that. They have to be on point. From both sides, they have to be on point today because their whole game plan does pivot around these key players. Middlecourt, I believe you agree with that one. So yeah, that's... I... Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think mid-jungle is also important. I also want to see um, what happens with Jinjo. I think Jinjo has been by far the best player for Lions Creed, in my opinion, so far. Um, so I think if he's able to get out of the early game looking strong, I think that's a very good sign for Lions Creed. So my question right now is, every single mid lane player that I interviewed throughout these three days uh, that we had previously, everybody was talking about, I want to beat Temp. I want to beat Temp. I want to defeat Temp and prove myself as a mid laner. From what we've seen with Temp, he's, he's an 
extremely good mid laner. But is he that good that everybody's looking at him like the one to kill? Is he that good right now? Is he showing it right now? I, I, I think you can just watch the Desire series if you want to see that. And if you wanted to beat Temp, you should have joined the Italian League, though. Um, I, I, I view these guys very strong as a unit. I don't necessarily think that individually they are the God Kings potentially outside of Vanteras and Jinjo. Vanteras on specific champions is brilliant individually, and Jinjo is really good if you give him these big lane bully chants. I still think of him as a Caitlyn player, even though he has... he has Oh yes! These kinds of champions! Lane bully champs! <laughs> speaks Jinjo to me. These already individual performances, I think, are. I do think, on an individual level, painful from what I've seen of him, can absolutely take it to Tempt, and Zubak yeah. is running it back with this Belveth. The Seraphine is here. You brought this up earlier as a potentially negating pick on bot lane for Ruddy. I think it could have the same thing here. So I think both teams are feeling each other out very, very well. Yeah, and and I really, really like the, the Callista lock in here. If it is, does end up getting pay, uh, paired up with an engaged support because this is what I want to see from Lions Clade. I want to see agency within these lanes where they can use the fact that they are very damn good at the game to gain advantages without having to worry about what the map actually looks like. Obviously, the rel still exists as a flex pick and could go towards Johan here, but I would much prefer to see it on Kasing just to have this super, super guaranteed go button coming out of the bot side. Sante might be the pick for the Lion's Creed, and this would be an interesting one, and also deliver so much. We have an unkillable wall, we have someone to set up the team fights, Kalissa to follow through. So this is Danger Zone coming in from uh, Lion's Creed on the other side, Venom. Oh, shh. okay. Okay, this is a pike with the yeah, setup. Yeah, is a big pike player. This is actually a really Ooh. good setup that they have running on the bot side here. And pike later on with the seraphine can do a lot. But crucially, you are now looking at a double set of resets here, right? The whole game now becomes about can we get burst down to a level where pike just goes on and on and on, and that can be a huge game changer. I am also thinking. With this setup, you are not necessarily looking to match them on the 2v2 bot lane. We're thinking about everywhere else, like that mid section we're talking about 2v2. Will it really be a 2v2 in this game, or will Pazzy make it a 3v2 and will bypass that whole potential issue with the synergy Johan and Tempt have shown in the past by just overwhelming them with numbers, mm. as Middlecott was talking about before the draft phase? I think a key thing as well here with the pike is the gold sharing that you get um, out of that ultimate could be really, really big for Zubak. I think one of the issues for Venomcrest yesterday is that Zubak didn't individually become powerful. A lot of the gold was going to Dead Hound, Painful, Lenny, a great players in their own right. But I think this roster really revolves around Zubak as a player and him being able to do stuff himself. So I think if he's picking up that bonus gold from the pike executes, mm -hmm. that can be really, really good, even if the kills aren't necessarily going on to him. Way to accelerate the economy from the team of Venom Crest. The last band coming in from Lion's Creed, looking into the top lane supposedly to try and remove any counter for that Cassante. We've seen Cassante mid today, so yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Something would be yeah. Different. I was thinking about that. Like yeah. you think maybe you could just be matching top lane on your next pick, but realistically, where is this Cassante going? The Karma is what I was thinking about already when the Oriana got banned. Because with the Nico ban, I'm thinking you want to go low mobility. Oriana with the Pike makes sense. But Karma as a pick composition with the Pike makes perfect sense as well. As a buffer to the Belveth makes perfect sense as well. Just slam that E on a pick based champion and watch that guy go ham. You used to see it paired up with Malkai a lot. Now you know for a fact what you're doing on the mid lane here. We could see this Karma go top into the Cassante. It is pretty good there. We could still see her go into mid as well. Or maybe they have something else to round out the composition. Akali is not banned. And you are looking to get enough burst down to get resets going on uh, Pazzy. Akali would actually not be a bad idea here whatsoever. Yeah, and I mean, when Lion's Creed are running sort of two damage threats, being able to just completely remove one with the Akali looks very, very good for you. We are going to be seeing the Nautilus locked in, so the Rel is getting flexed into the jungle, but this is the same sort of champion that we were expecting, that we were hoping for. Big engage tools for focusing, and for Jinjo coming out of the bot lane. Oh. Hello there. <sighs> I like okay. this. This okay. is chaos. The difficulty, the difficulty is that you'd think on the face of it, building defense here is quite simple for the Cassante. 
Um, and he would be a ridiculously tanky behemoth the later we go on in the game. If that doesn't become an issue, comp on the right looks very, very scary. It's very easy to make a pick on the own. It's very easy to make a pick with the belt. It's very easy to get that pike rolling. Um, but the flip side is still there. The damage mix isn't necessarily there until we get to a point where this karma is just has mantra up every three seconds. And that is a point that you can get to, I believe, on the patch that we are playing on here. Um, and if we are indeed playing on that patch, mm -hmm. that's their ace in the hole. If we're not playing on that patch, I do apologize that I'm actually not entirely clear on if we are. If we are on that patch, then there is a timer. There is a potential timer where the great champion that doesn't really count, Cassante, could just face roll over all of them and play the easiest game of League of Legends on their life. So let's see how they deal with it. There's the ticking timer there. Nord would mm -hmm. obviously lose this game according to Middlecott. Let's see what Venom Crest can do. Well, both top teams looking to get that W and get the 3-1, which will put them in a really good position in the standings. We're still at the beginning of the split, but nonetheless, this is a clash of Titans. And in order to send that to the Titans themselves, it is Redoot and Initialize. I think one of them is British. Maybe. <laughs> well, apparently so. Yeah, you know, rumor has it. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, you know. My, my passport is, an or is, you know, is a mystery. I definitely didn't lose it over the holidays, and that was a disaster in the making. Do you want to talk about that? That was that was a whole, whole thing. Well, the good but thing what is, is also that we've got plenty of oh, plenty of other stuff to talk yeah, about, right? Because we, we have Venom Crest, who have pulled out double Enchanter plus double melee carries plus Pike, thrown in for good measure. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have Lions Creed, who are looking to bounce back from what was a surprise defeat yesterday, um, and they they've. Answered some expectations, kind of shown us something a little bit new as well, though. Yeah, I mean, but the thing is, they're also into a comp here that is just mm -hmm. so wildly different. Like, Lion's Creed's comp is pretty standard, with the exception, perhaps, of this is saying we're a Callista team, which not every team is, but it's a relatively accepted pick at the pro level. Yeah. Teams that are good at Callista make other teams scared. This champion is very strong. When you've got yourself a Nautilus and a Rel to go alongside that, to, to set things up with a Cassante and the Azir being additional DPS, it all feels very coherent and strong. You can play to be very, very scary through that bot. The problem is that's against more stand compositions. And I think, as Veteran was kind of alluding to on the other side, you've got a Belveth and a Yone with double Enchantus behind them and a Pike to execute whoever they don't kill. If that Death Ball comp comes online, and Belveth gets to jump onto Callista and she can't hop fast enough. Mm -hmm. It is a bad day to be Ginger. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the double enchanter nature is going to be very scary because the, the idea of melee champions is, oh, you just kite them, and especially Callista. I have a dash every auto mm. attack. Cool. Oh, well, Karma gives these guys 700 movement speed and Seraphine helps that with shields and heals as well. There's a very real possibility that Ginger gets yeah. run down. Um, and it's actually going to be really interesting to see what Banderas' role plays in this game because this is mm -hmm. going to be a can we ignore the tank top lane question check. Um, and Banderas has to make sure that that answer is no for Lion's Creed to really have a chance in those death balls. Maybe try and isolate out some of those enchanters, make sure that they're not contributing to the 5v5 if possible. Yeah, exactly. And then, like, on top of that, you know, by having a second enchanter, you're not requiring your, your double-up songs, really, to be mm. getting a lot of the additional Seraphine benefits. Particularly, that's true with the beat drop, where if Karma's slowing with the Mantra Q, it's a single E that will, will, that will root from the side of the, the Seraphine. Hell, if you get the, the empowered root uh, with the slow already on, I think it's then a stun. I think it even gets even more powerful. I need to remember to look up that up again. But, you know, you already got ways to make Seraphine's life even easier on top of that. Add in a pike for a bit of volatility. Add Zubak, who has been a bit of a star in terms of his ability to carry on some of these two-item kind of carry AD junglers. A big Viego player. Had a de decent showing on the Belveth yesterday. This could get very interesting indeed very fast. So double TPs taken for Painful and Deadhound. Obviously, plenty on that top side taking it as well. Uh, plenty of map pressure for venom crest as we move mm. a little bit later into this game i also want to take note of the cleanse for ginger i think that's going to be a very important summoner spell for us to keep yeah. track of if you get caught by seraphine encore you've got a you've got an escape tool now that's the good news if you get caught by it a second time within that window hey you know what not so much but uh, we're hoping that with all the hops uh, that that's not going to be the case and that we should see ginger get out to safety more often than not We'll see if he can make it more than one hop this time and cha-cha real smooth to a victory. But mm. 
it's going to be interesting because you look at the side of Lions Creek Comp and you go, I know how this plays. They know how this plays. And Venom Crest 1 is a little bit more of you raise your eyebrow and you have to think your way through it a little bit more. Like, is Dead Hound, for example, going to be building towards more of an enchanter option? Is he going to be going for more of an AP carry option? How is that going to play? How is Zubat going to play the Belveth? Is he going to get the kind of freedom to invade and do this kind of thing? He's certainly going to attempt it very early on. Yeah, I mean, he's got push in the mid lane, so you expect this Karma to be able to move. Johan getting forced off. May well reset the Grump, but this is time wasted on both junglers' side. Whoever gets this is going to be just that little bit... Zubak's got Smite. Looks good for so, the yeah. Belveth, yeah. Just gives it up, and I think, Johan, why is he deciding that's not a fight I want to take, especially with where lane pressure is right now in a surprise to very few. Karma gets shoved pretty readily in mid lane, and the Yone has the shove early on into the Cassante, so that gives rain for Zubak to go galloping on into the enemy jungle. Yeah, and I, <laughs> this is one of the clears of all time from Zubak. He did his Raptors, enemy Gromp, recalled, and picked up a pink ward. So we'll have to see whether or not that one catches on. Yep. Or, or if that, that's just that's gonna... choice, actually. You're right. That is very unusual. Um, I guess he's just saying it's actually easier for me to get towards my red buff if I recall than walking all the way back. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I, I mean, I'm sure there's some thought processes there. These players tend to think about what they're doing before uh, just, just YOLO throwing it Are out Are you sure? There. I don't know. I, I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. I like to give them the benefit of the doubt, you know? Um, and, and maybe we can, we can you know, message you back afterwards and we go, hey, is this intended? And he goes, nope, I grieved. And this was the best Do you solution. know what? Yeah. No, that's genuinely a beautiful... I would be very interested to hear what the thought press is behind that part of that pathing. Because in a lot of ways, it feels like Zubak has made these choices consciously. And a lot of junglers do. And I'm joking around a little bit. But of course, Zubak is very aware on how to play champions like the Belveth, how to try and get value out of them early. And they're certainly doing their very best to gain advantages early where they can. Very swiftly heading over towards the bot side Scuttle Crab that Spawn has still got their blue side quadrant to get a hold of. And I think actually if they start reverse clearing, we'll be around when Grub Spawn without having to necessarily back and be in an awkward position. Zubat comes towards the bot side himself, gets a knock up on Johan, but nothing really amounts to anything found here the ignite at some point was born burned by pike but that's about it and that was earlier on in the game anyway yeah i am interested by this bot side matchup actually because in my head kasing and jinjo should be absolutely walking this bot lane like dead Hamp and pashi shouldn't really have too much to answer but that's not particularly been the case right there's a you know three cs lead call we don't particularly care about that much and dead hound has been able to stave off the callista's early game quite significantly so far um would expect Jinjo to come away from this bot lane with a decent CS lead as well. Some sort of mage bot lane issue is that sometimes mm. you do just end up losing a little bit of farm. Oh, oh painful. In danger. Tempt flashes away from the Phantom Undertow, and it's a solid roam for Pashi to save. Was looking a little bit dicey there for Painful, but perhaps it was all a bait all along. I actually think that's a, a bit of a... Ah, you know, that, that's tricky. I wouldn't have flashed there, and I may have died, but I also don't think there was an angle for a Karma Q, and I don't think they would have had the damage to finish off that fight, specifically without the Ignite as well. Now, what this does give Tempt is enough HP to stick around and push this wave in, so definitely has the uh, silver lining of having burned that flash. He doesn't have Teleport, so he's going to have to take a recall regardless and sort of tank that. Maybe he stays in the lane because he preserved his HP with that flash. I guess that's probably the thought process. Like, look, I burn the flash, I get to stay in lane, and actually I don't necessarily know where the enemy jungler is. If there's something more here, this gets scary. And actually, in fairness, I wonder whether Painful would have had Mantra Renewal up the, the, the tether, which might have led to him being rooted in place and then just being there long enough to be to yeah. go down, especially as Pike's damage early is pretty heavy. Regardless, there though, Void Grubs picked up for the Belveth. Yep. Level 6 here for Lenny. Okay. Yeah. It does indeed. It's not going to use it quite yet. And that was what I was wondering, actually, for the Belveth. Um, that path, the way it was done, basically meant they were going to be around Grubs as they spawn. And there isn't really much of a way to contest. So Zubak gets those nice and early. And look, still got that Control Ward in inventory. Still hasn't gone back. So really has just gone back for that Control Ward, reverse cleared, been there as Grump spawn, and picked those up as Belveth loves to do. That's Bandaras, who's actually just used his Ghost here. Now Zubak obviously spotted with the Void Grubs plus mm. that Ward here. And he still has ulti. Yeah. Uh. Attempt hits the wrong end of a mantra Q, it looks like, and will be forced to reset. But the wave is shoved out enough, I think, for him to be able to go back and not feel too bad about his options. To try to crash this wave on the top side, you can see Bandera's yeah. just holding it outside of that turret. Having range. none of it. 
Yeah, is he going to interrupt this? He gets a Q3. Zubak's not very happy about that. Will be delayed on the reset. Banderas doesn't decide anything more is required. And away we move. Just a little bit of frustration. As Kasane flashes for a root and gets a root to uh, like a flash in turn from Deadhound. Right. Very aggressive there. I mean, yeah, fair enough. I didn't expect the Seraphine to need to flash, but again, uh, that's going to be a tool that they can hopefully exploit once we reach level 6. Is obviously when Jinjo and Kasing both have that level 6 marker, their kill threat definitely increases mm. quite a lot. They've got a lot more CC to work with. You can see they've actually frozen this bot wave quite nicely, so Deadhound oh, can yeah. have to walk up and probably use spells to last hit it, which again makes it even trickier, makes that wave push further away just because the Seraphine is AoE. Uh, yeah. It's on the top of your screen as well. Kasing, if he goes forwards here, he's about to find the waiting arms of the Void Empress. Yeah. top side. First blood from Banderas. All right. Nicely done. Uh, all out used on that top side. No ghost needed. It looks like uh, Lenny not really using any of his tools at all there, right? We've still got Flash. We've still got ulti available. But Banderas finding the first blood. Uh, the way to counter the full build of Yone, obviously. You know, comes back to lane with Berserker Greaves. Usually of Amp Scepter as well before we give him full build status. Uh, on one of the Wind Brothers, but Bramble Vest, a very good way of keeping him in check. Yeah. And clearly worked well, out well. And a surprise to everyone, the uh, anime swordsman in the top lane has a tragic background. And Brad, uh, as he gets taken out there by uh, someone, forgive it, telling his master to forgive him and going all out. Gets the kill there and gets away with it. Bandra's feeling very pleased. That's Tempt staying away as far as he can from where he suspects a bike might be roaming, and he would be right. Dragon secured as a result of all of that pressure and Tempt stays alive here as people were beginning to investigate his lane. So of course we kind of had the desk breakdown that, you know, this death ball composition from Venom Crest, generally speaking, gonna favor this slower style of early game. Uh, and the question that we sort of had the way to counter that, can Benderas be that immovable object that demands an answer equally? Can we see a world where Jinjo and Kasing start the snowball and make sure that the mm -hmm. Venom Crest squad never get to that late game stage? Uh, you know, it's been nine minutes. We've only seen one kill up on that top plane and there's a slight CS lead down on the bot side, but not too much to write home about. Uh, Lion's Creed still don't need to be worried. I think that they've still got plenty of time before that window elapses. Formally, you know, I'd say again, like three, four seasons oh, yeah. ago, you'd be looking at like you know, 10 minutes before you're kind of going, well, you're about to get it's outscaled. Doomed. But with Void Grubs, with Rift Heralds, with all of the neutral objectives that happen earlier on in the game, there's a lot more intangibles that Lion's Creed can secure for themselves that push that window back quite significantly. Zubak just hits level six, so we'll have that Royal Mails, the uh, the, the Royal Mail Stream available to try and do some work with it. Sorry, that's the E. Um, I think what's the R from Belveth called again? Oh, you're asking the wrong person. Manners. I'm going to be. I honest. know. I should know that one. I keep thinking, I keep wanting to call it Royal Maelstrom, but that's the E. That's the big sort of muda 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 slappy fight. I ha in my head, it's like starvate. It's like something to do with food, and and I'm probably entirely it's, wrong. Oh, it's banquet. It's 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 endless banquet. You're absolutely right. Oh. It is food related. There we go. Well, you know what? There we go. We're a duo, and that's how that works. Spot on. Uh, Thank you for saving me there. I was like, I do know this one, but I was like, I keep. I was like, I was like, the moment I said no, that's the E. I had to think about what order mm. skills were in suddenly. As uh. Temp trying to defend his control war best he can. Johan is around, but I don't think he's going to be willing to start a fight there that would be a little bit dicey, you have to feel. Johan, though, gets a Q into a bit of a crash down and will prevent the easy start of the Void Grubs that Zubak was looking for. Remember, yeah. they did get the early three. Exactly. Want to try and deny as many of these as possible. Venom Crest obviously wants to try and secure as many of these as possible. Now, they do still want to move up their pike. This is that window now with level six mm -hmm. available for Pashi that he can really have an impact. Uh, the question is, where does their damage come from in these early stages? You're looking at base damages of Karma. Potentially, the Noon Quiver helps out a little bit, but Venom Crest not really doing too much around their grubs. Ooh, tries to go for that, but it's a good flash away. Now, Tempt is in danger, flashes himself and tries to stay out of safety. Death! From below, X marks the spot, and they do make it work as a bit of a skirmish turns up in mid lane. Painful gets another on the way out with a Mantra Q, the Soul Flare, claiming Kasing's life. Alrighty, there we go. Venom Crest finding a two for nothing in the mid lane. And oh, wait. Top side. Ooh, all out. Lenny has to flash. Ghost is popped, though, and now needs to run a long, long way away, but it's nicely buffered. Lenny trying to play this one out. Gets one back, but now Zubak can surely trade that out and consume the waiting body of Banderas for another I'd, kill. I'd like to see them go and try and hit onto these Void Grubs. There's still one or two left, if I remember correctly, and then you obviously get all the little ratatas to try and help you out. But instead, <laughs> they're going to look to try and take a reset. Uh, I guess 
They didn't want the Void Grove that was there. And they're going to make sure that they're not sacrificing too much on that bot side of the map. Uh, just to make take those resets and make them happen. Uh, Belveth goes back and gets a crack and saying, you feel that might be part of the reasoning. Look, if you're coming back, yeah. at least I'm fighting with that very key item. Side, you're looking at Johan, who's still there at Ruby Crystal and Ionian Boots, feeling a little bit sadder <laughs> in terms of the gold and what's available to them item-wise. Yeah, I think they... I mean... I mean Johan had these items when they first took the fight around the Herald to begin with, so you can imagine that Johan's also sat on quite a lot of money for the time being. One would imagine, yes. Yeah, you'd hope so anyway. That's one Void Grub extra taken. I'm assuming that there's yep. still another one. So likely going to be five of the six secured. Indeed. Which obviously helps out quite significantly if they can get access to these turrets as we move later into the game. Johan's stealing away a blue buff as compensation almost but it's not going to be the trade for the dragon and venom crest probably going to move their way down to that bot side as well painful but steps forward gets the renewal down there's the root but here comes the rest of it. it's all a bait temp goes and throws down the emperor's divide needs to stay away malignant's just wide now painful's a dangerous temp trying to find someone to run gets the shield stays alive pashi looking to go the forward healing. has got to death from below and painful's still not dead what is karma? A double kill for Pike. Another in the mid lane. Zubak gets this one. And Venom Crest are doing it. And now the Red Hatters are out to party. They're going to try and take this turret as best as possible. The Mantra healing from Painful keeps him alive and baits in three members of Lion's Creed to try and take them down. Venom Crest, they're using this Death Ball, the heals, the shields, and everything is coming to fruition for them. Lion's Creed, that window of their capitalizing on an early game advantage, it's closed. Their composition. Not outscaled to the maximum yet, but those early game advantages that they'd have been looking to take just aren't quite hitting. And you saw it, the observers showed. The vision was all a bait because the side of uh, Lion's Creed were roaming up the river and Temp tried to play bait and ends up getting burned for it. The extended fight, the fact Painful just does not die is absolutely unbelievable. And Venom Crest, now with a 4,000 gold lead, now with two dragons, now with five Void Grubs. And a Belveth that is snowballing with double enchanters behind them. Lion's Creek need to start getting worried. This could be a 0-2 week. Yeah, very easily. Uh, and it's certainly looking that way. Uh, I mean, outside of top lane, right, it, it's more than 4,000 gold. You've got a decent advantage for Banderas in that top matchup. And honestly, the bot lane too, there's still a slight gold lead for Jinjo. But what good is that gold lead at this stage in the game? And that question of, can a Callista deal with double enchanter buffed Belveth? But when the Belveth's got uh -huh. six out of six kill participation, signs are pointing more towards no Lion's Creed the first time they're really looking to contest for a neutral objective. It is going to be this Rift Herald. Really value taking this away when the enemy team has got Void Grubs as well to spawn in. And again, credit over towards Pashi on this pike. 301 Voltaic Circular Sword Complete has been in mid lane so many times to such huge effect. Tempt has been ducking, dodging, diving, and trying to be like Middlecott's hobby, but he just can't dodge enough balls because everybody is throwing so many skill shots. There's just not enough in the tank to stay safe. Yeah, now the question is, how cautious are they heading into their bot side jungle? Looks like very. Taking very, very and why is so? <laughs> Yeah, as soon as three people disappear into your bot side jungle, they're, they're giving them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they're going to try and spring a trap. We'll need to try and clear out Speaking that pink off. ward. So that is a very valuable pink ward for Venom Crest right now. Oh, Tem, and here is just why. nowhere to be. That's so brutal. It's a good Emperor's Divide, but he just can't get far enough away. Yep, yeah, uh, and you know, the, you have to give credit for the amount of safety that Lion's Creed took, but it only left their mid laner out on an island. Pashi again. That was a really nice hook over the wall, lining up well with his jungler. Oh. Between Void Grubs, Void Mites, Belveth passive, and <laughs> Grub passive coming out to play. Oh. The shove from Venom, Cre uh, Venom Crest, rather. I don't want to conflate the two teams too much. Gets yeah, very, very scary, but then again, maybe I'm conflating them for a reason, because it feels like Venom Crest uh, surprised nearly every one of us by being so much better than, than a lot of us had in our preseason power rankings. Mm -hmm. Looking to go ahead of their tied opponents. This would be a big pickup though if they can get it. Zubak flashing to try and dash away, but it just doesn't matter. Jinjo picks that one up. Cannot get far enough Ooh. away, and that's a big shutdown that goes into the hand of Temp somehow, yeah. some way. Uh, down on that bot side as well. Uh, double TP came through from the Lion's Creed solo lane as they also managed to take down Deadhound there. So two for nothing. 
Uh, they don't get anything else from this, and it also looks like Lenny's going to get some free time alone with that topside turret. So this is uh, Lion's Creed sort of recuperating, almost getting themselves a little bit of gold back where they can. Uh, with Venom Crest still dictating, for the most part, what is going on on the map. Now, if Banderas can get back here and stop this tier 1 turret from going down, then it is just two kills mm. for nothing. He's trying his best. Lenny not able to take it. So, win for Lion's Creed, obviously, taking down those couple kills, getting Jinjo finally on the board. Still think there's a world where this team fight can go well for Lion's Creed. The late game yes. damage output of Enazir, of a Kasante, honestly. Um, definitely nothing to, nothing to scoff at. Very reliant as well on people like Pike and Yone and Belveth getting into the thick of things. And if that ever becomes difficult, if that ever becomes a, a hardship for Venom Crest, then the damage rating does get a lot lower. Looking, of course, over Deadhand has opted, I think, uh, something I agree with, honestly, uh, towards a more carry option on the Seraphine has gone towards the Seraphs first. Is looking to build towards being damaged. And that's kind of necessary because actually a lot of your range damage is limited otherwise. <laughs> Yeah, I really, honestly, just value ability haste uh, and mana on Seraphine, yeah. right? No matter how you end up going about that, if you have AP in the build path as well, that just kind of triples down on the core of what you really would like. And obviously with that Seraph's Embrace almost finished as well, it means that if you do get a little bit caught out, if you are caught by a Rogue Nautilus hook, if the random engage from Johan manages to find you, spot you out, then you've got that extra added element of safety with the shield that comes through. Lion's Creed, they didn't manage to actually take any drakes so far, so stacking going to be very crucial if Venom Chris can secure this one. That means they are on Soul. It is unfortunately Cloud that they've rolled. But I will say, Cloud Soul with Karma plus Seraphine uh, and the sort of movement speed nature that they're going for, definitely going to have a lot of value this game. You can see in the infantry as well, Rectrix there from Pike, likely building towards something like a Ghost Blade, you'd imagine towards opportunity, but you feel Ghostblade is often the more valuable option for Pike, who loves to be roaming around the map as fast as they can. Dragon spawns. It will be Lion's Creed that get a hold of it, and again, you've drafted a Callista. You have to really get a hold of too many objectives. You've got a Herald and Inventory to work with at some point, but overcome Venomcrest, they want to fight Johan this. Johan engage here. They've got an angle to get in. Here we go. Johan does exactly that. Crash down Magnus Storm. Zubak sold it out by Vanderus, who goes all out on him. The Encore wow. is good, but it's too little. It's too late. And the grouped up fight from the side of Lion Screen is brutal. Brought away Pashi. Does manage to get some executes. And actually, all the while, somehow, some way, Venom Crest managed to turn it around because Lenny was able to get something. Good hug. Try to get something more. Vanderus tries to dive on forwards. Will not get the Q3 onto the Yone. Flash away Ooh. prevents that soul and bound from getting something more. And it ends up being a 3 for 3 despite a great start from. Lion's Creed. Yeah, the top support, the only two of each team able to get away. Starts off very good for Lion's Creed, and that's a difficult engage for them to try and replicate. Johan obviously going to use his flash in that instance to start out the fight. And because actually Lion's Creed started that fight better, it's Venom Crest that are able to respawn sooner and get to war this Drake faster. Uh, what's the opposite of suffering from top success? <laughs> Yeah, wow. Suffering. Just just suffering in general. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Eight damage separates our two top players from that team fight. It's very rare that you'll see such a small margin. Very close. Indeed it was. And actually, the fact that Yone got to survive despite the early damage taken, the fact that Bandras did so much work on the side, making sure that Zubak wasn't really involved. He's going to be involved in this one, though. Gets a nice quick pickup. And remember, Baron has spawned. So you could maybe look to force the 4v5 advantage, especially with true form on Belveth and a lot of enchanters to keep yourself healthy. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, Kasing not the premier target that you're looking for if you're looking, looking to at set it. up that Baron. But yeah, there you go. absolutely. Head for that. Banderas has teleport. Temps too, but they're pretty much in the ring, in the wings anyway. They can get there soon enough. Venom Crest able to turn. Johan. Now, Johan. Oh, Encore, but we'll do a decent job of crashing down. But he's crashing down into an early grave, I think. Yone picks up that one. And the death ball from Venom Crest is rolling forwards. And they're just baiting always. Lion's Creed then thought they were going to the Baron. They didn't. They thought, we'll take another fight. See if they can get another skirmish. Solid attempt with the fates here. Won't quite line. Temp flashes away. Allowed oh, Pashi to kind of walk forward potentially. And they just have to get on out. But another summoner blown. Yeah, maybe Pashi's they just go back and try it all over again. He's playing like a man possessed on the pack. He just ulted four He's full so HP good. targets. Specifically to get in range to hook more people. Like, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't him thinking, oh, I can kill them with this. It was so he could hook oh, again. Someone checking PC. I know. He's like, stop it before he hooks again. 
And again, oh. another effort at the Baron. Lion's Creed thwart this one once again, showing enough presence here. If they don't have agency to get to Tempt, it's difficult for Venom Crest to feel confident taking this fight. And with them having stepped into that Baron, they may end up losing this mid-tier one as a consequence. So, small win there for Lion's Creed if they can secure this objective. And there's a small will in their column, looking back the absolute gold mine the Venom Crest has struck in the other. Just look at the gold lead, look at the soul point they're on. Look at where that gold is as well. The pike mm -hmm. is truly snowballed. And you know what happens when Pike snowballs? He feeds that gold to absolutely everybody else on your team. This led them to a fairly significant 5,000 odd gold lead. Yeah, and he's been he's been getting those executes as well, right? Like sometimes you'll think, oh, maybe the Pike's just KSing and not passing that nope. gold to anyone. Nope, he he's been he's been using his ulti, uh, and it's been going crazy in this matchup. 5k gold lead for Venom Crest, and you know, you can contribute probably 3k of that to the support role easily. Johan starts upon his blue buff, but he's going to be a global buff now, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, if they can take this one. Give a little bit more agency to the squad, and Temp specifically going to really enjoy that. I very much enjoy a blue buff. Here's Temp, likes the ability haste, likes the mana regen for obvious reasons. He's on Banderas as well, perhaps a Shining Light, a champion for the side of Lion's Creed to maybe find some way back in this game. 5-1-1, one, one. you heard the desk <laughs> saying if that Cassante becomes unmanageable, it could prove difficult. And certainly in that last big dragon fight, he was an absolute beast for them to deal with. And Crest have said, well, we don't have to worry too much about that if we can just force you all to Baron one more time. Well, it's two Frozen Hearts now finished for Lion's Creed, so the Bell Death Auto attack speed is going to be a little bit lower, despite how the ridiculous speeds that it can get to. Doesn't stack necessarily, so you'd like to see Johan and Banderas maybe on opposite sides of the fight so that they're affecting as many people as possible. I'd like to see that second item finished for oh, Johan no. as well. That's a That's sad moment. Synergy. Double control wards. It is. That's... They both know what they wanted. <laughs> we we have to pink this. Yes, I agree. Okay. Let's pink okay, this. Yep. And then and then Question and then mark pings. Yeah. Uh, it's slightly, and then he gets passive-aggressive messages in chat. It's all that part of the game. Red buff secured as well. So Lenny, continue to try and be a threat here on the Yone, and uh, you have something for me, Rudy. Yeah, I mean, we have a Drake spawning in a minute. We have a Soul spawning specifically oh, yes. for Venom Crest. So that's going to be very important uh, for the Serpents if they can secure this one. Uh, then obviously, I don't think that was this. for me. That's for Venom Crest. You know, I thought you had something for me. Uh, Come on, man. Well, um, you know what? Send me your address. We'll figure something out. <laughs> it's it's simple, really. Oh, indeed it is. But let's indeed, indeed focus our eyes towards the big neutral objectives. Venom Crest have got the ability to toy and pull Lion's Creed across the map. Both of those objectives would be big wins for them. But Lion's Creed is saying, screw waiting for the Dragon to spawn. We're just going to force the Baron. Got yeah, I'm not a fan. Kalistran. And it's a bit risky. It's definitely tricky. And even if this goes well for them, Venom Crest likely going to get the Drake off the back of Lion's Crest. Lion's Creed resets. Engage. Oh, big damage back onto Zubak. Trying to keep him alive. Oh, into the back line goes Lenny, who dies. That's the Yone dead already. Zubak so low. Banderas is a monster in the front line. Yes, the Rel is dead, though. That means your jungle is down. So that's Soul likely just secured because Johan's not going to be there. Just look Zubak. at the healing. He gets true form. Oh, he's going to try and look forward past you. Continues to be scary. And you've got shields, heals. And enough damage left that despite what looking like a pretty good fight for Lion's Creed at the outset, once again, the end of it is just so difficult to play out. All right. Cloud Soul is their prize. Zubak going to waste no time more than happily able yep. to secure that for his side. You know, I came into this week thinking Venom Crest had a really tough schedule yesterday. They ended up dropping a game this today, though. Arguably, maybe the harder game of the two find themselves Tempt. in a very good position. Shifts on forwards, avoids a hook. Bone skewer could have been very deadly indeed there. Two items completed for Lions uh, Creed in the mid and bot, but like three in the top. That's great. The problem is I'm looking at the other side and I'm going, this death ball has been well and truly completed. You've got a Cloud Soul as well on a team that is going to love having more movement speed to start running at people. Above us, below, and below six feet is where Kasing finds himself. Banderas goes forwards, but amounts to little at this point. The blue trinkets begin to fly. Hook back again. Is Banderas, and finally they'll bring down that so annoying tanky top Whoa. laner. Mantra Q onto Tempt, who hops over the wall. You've lost your support. You've lost your top laner. You've got no front line. 
and Baron will be Venom Crest for the taking. Yeah, that window, it's it's unfortunately closed for Lion's Creed Slam here. The death shot. ball is just too enforced. Temp teleports away. Teleports away to the bot lane. Can't decide they're going to get something here. Yeah, pity prizes. That tier one turret down on the bot side. It's really not going to be too great. Iron secured. True form now for the Belveth for the next three minutes, is it? And uh, Zubak... He's had such a good start to this split. Two Viego games to open up his uh, mm -hmm. NLC Div 1 spot uh, and looked incredible on those. Now he's opened up with a Belveth as well. Really liking this style of Venom Crest. One of our few teams that are pivoting ex almost exclusively toward carry junglers and making that a focus. Yes. Point. And again, this is a team that feels like they are a well oiled machine. They feel like a coordinated unit that have got strategies like this in the back pocket. And yes, you've got a few focal points. Zubak in particular, as you said, has been really consistently good and a devastating carry. But look, Pashi this game, Lenny this game have been really good themselves. And this team feels like more than the sum of its part, like a cohesive picture in so many ways. And they have begun to make a lot of people very, very nervous. It's not a bad little pick on the people who goes down. But maybe Bonuses. that's maybe. This is a moment back. Kasing desperately low. Lenny has to go back as Assault becomes rebounded into his mortal form. Ginger rends him down. And suddenly Lion Screen begins to roar. The Lion is awake. Four kills secure. Baron buff shove denied. They need to hold this mid wave. Look at Zubak. Didn't look I thought he was going to try and hold that and stop the push. He might just be able to Found take him. out Johan. Oh, no. He's going to have to run away. He's got some speed zones courtesy of a Cloud Rift to run away. And Banderas will just take him as far away from that minion wave as he can to give as much free time for Jinjo to get a hold of at least a turret there. And a moment of light in a game that has felt remarkably Venom Crest favoured. It's a great pickup from Banderas. Spots the karma just a little bit too isolated and hits him with the all out. Takes him back into the team. Encore missing as well, going to be fairly painful uh, for Venom Crest. That's a big tool if they don't have that one ready. You can see Zubak can just become a split Four. pusher here. Um, has, has a small army with him. Grubs and void. It's, 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 it's void, no, no grubs. void grubs. It's just, I mean, it's just like yeah. various void critters. Yeah, and there's no void mites there. Uh, he only gets those when he hits the turret. That is that is just Belveth with a Baron. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty fun when you get that and you're able to just push as much as possible. Killing this Beldeth is going to be really important. You know, you want to try and deny that true form as much as possible. Mm. Still got 30 seconds left on it, so hey, it, it's time for them to go. They've still got the Baron, they've still got the yeah. critters spawning. Oh my days, what is that? It's an army! What on earth is that? It's just not okay. It's just not it's manageable. What I mean, do you do to stop this? They're all Baron empowered! Yeah, you're, you're hoping that Temps can do something. Fire. Wailing well, away on these creeps. All right, manages to make it happen. Uh, and, you know, they take this inhibitor, which was... Wow! It felt like mercy from Venom Crest to only take the inhibitor there. The amount of... The, the amount of NPCs that are on my screen gave me a headache. Yeah, I felt like I was looking at a very different style of game. I know... Looking at maybe one or two mm. new RTSs coming out, but that felt like Warcraft for a second there with the full army coming on through. It's a Zerg rush through mid. Yeah, I, I built myself a level 16 Azir. Is this oh, enough for the on. wave? Teleport? Well, right, so where did Johan come from? He's found his way over the wall somehow, some way. Then he goes on forwards, but now he has to go immediately straight back. It's a good route. Front line screen for finding too much more. The blast cone away denies something more. Elder spawns in a minute, and you begin to wonder whether Lion's Creep were just thinking, I'm right, trying to catch someone out before anything else happened. Yeah, fortunately, you think those ultis are going to be up and available just in time before that Elder. The Callista ulti is going to be the one that's a little bit of a struggle. Bandera still has his ult on the shuffle, is still available as well. Whether that's engage or disengage, Temp still has a bit of a tool to make work. Mm. Now, mid lane, of course, going to be a bit of a sticky spot for Lion's Creed. They're going to have to push that quite significantly in to buy them time to start to posture around this dragon. The super minion's going to be providing no end of value to Venom Crest if they can just stall Lion's Creed around an Elder Dragon. Minions can do the hard work. Remember, they've got triple TP, so Lenny, Painful, Deadhound. If they see three, four people out of the base, teleporting in and ending the game is very much on the cards. Yeah, and if you don't know particularly where Pashi on the pike is, you could suddenly hand up in uh, a significantly more sticky situation than it might have been. Tempt 
will be the one tasked with trying to maintain control over the mid lane best he can, but he's got three damage items, and one of those is now the completed death cap. That's great, but he thinks he's in a 1v1, and the pike comes out of nowhere as he has multiple times this game. Temp can find himself in a sticky situation once more. The chain also finished. Banderas. Oh. First makes him sure he's path-making to keep himself Ooh, safe. Teleport Johan. on in. Johan's Johan. got a great flank. He's on the back of the wolves in Venom Crest's jungle. Don't know if he's nice. been spotted. I don't think he's started has. up. Pashi trying to stop for that one. They've stopped this one up. They've got Rend, but no smite currently because their jungler's not here. That tells me they're looking for a fight. Here he comes. They're going on in. Trying to find an angle in. Big man. Lenny. Tries to find some time for Lenny with a fate sealed that might just do it for the game. A double kill for Pashi. Pike drags them all into the dark, dark waters. And it's all but over for the crying. Johan runs away, cantering towards an end of a game. It was a valiant effort, but Venom Crest say no, sink their fangs into the lions and go to three and one. And it's the French top laner with a beautiful fate sealed, the counter engage of doom, smites Lion's Creek down and gives them their second loss on the weekend. They were supposed to be the best team in the league. According to Veteran, they're only supposed to drop one game. That's two back-to-back. -back. Lions Creed, a winless week. Venom Crest continue to surprise and surpass every expectation. A, a great performance from our Division 2 promoters. I, this is exactly why we love to see teams and relegations Fantastic. and promotions sticking with a core of their roster at Venom Crest here. Uh, showing what you can do when you just got that little bit of continuation, uh, a little bit of faith in the team. And honestly, uh, you know, the new pickup right there went very well in that team fight. Oh, yes, it was. They had a draft prepared. They came in and they played it so, so well. They take down one of the pre-split favorites and come away with a well-earned victory. To break, but to break down this final game, we have to go towards the analyst desk. So we'll do that in a moment. Series, we make the headsets, mice, and keyboards that the world's best gamers win the most with. And we've been doing it since way back. It's up to you how far you go, but whatever you do, go for glory. Bring it up, bring it up. Step on the glass, let's get out of town. We're gonna break out and have some fun. We're gonna do what you never do.
tired, boss. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Ah, oh, you, you can apologize later. I think we should all just be basking in the glory of Venom Crest right now. What a game! What a performance from these guys playing Div 2 last year, coming up, new org to the NLC, taking down these veteran players, these Korean imports, and showing the power that exists within our region. Brilliant stuff. I hate Lion's Creed so much. <laughs> The thing, the thing is, this was the game they were supposed to lose. I'm uh, really just mad because they lost yesterday, man. That's what <laughs> really messed me up. Like, man, you know what? Now, now I'm now I root against them. I bet against them every week from now on, all right? Because it's done. It's done. It's a crumpled sheet of paper. It's not, it's not getting flattened again, all right? My trust, it's over. You know, you can't break trust in a relationship like this, all right? You can never ever actually get it all back. Um, congrats to Venom Crest. Good oh, job. Amazing. You made them suffer. I hope you make them suffer even more. Go have a kebab on me or whatever. Um, <laughs> probably shouldn't have lost yesterday. But yeah, no, their, their composition was pretty much built around one person, right? It was built around one man and his pike. We knew this guy was a good pike player. Mm -hmm. He had a phenomenal game on the champion. Um, and they were able to beat everything. They were able to beat the timer. They were able to beat the mid jungle. They were able to beat every aspect of Lion's Creed that you needed to take down to be able to get the win on them. Congratulations, Pazzy. Picture doesn't do you justice. Picture on the bottom right is the real you. Um, <laughs> ten, wow, one, man. and seven. Jesus Christ, yeah. man, dude, this guy was this guy was absolutely beast mode. Yeah. It? And let's be honest, that composition they brought into the game was disgusting. It was horrible to play against. I I just love it. I just love it. The last fight, there were a couple of fights where we thought Lion's Creed can take it back. Mm. But let's be honest, there's a recurring issue. The rotation coming in from Lion's Creed is, is not pleasant to look at. And it seems like Venom is on one step above. I think this is the team to take it all in the, in the split. I look at them and like, I love these guys. No, I just love I, them. I, I think they played absolutely fantastic. And I think you hit the nail on the head there. When Lion's Creed was set up as a fight, going straight into the fights versus Venomcrest, they were actually coming out on top in a lot of these yeah. situations. Yeah. But it was Venomcrest constantly finding these picks. It was one or two members out of position. I think there were a few hooks going down onto Kasing that he just shouldn't really be there, right? And this is one of the issues that you have when you're playing against a reset-based composition. You can't get caught out. You can't be that first yeah. step because it's never just one. A, a, a big problem they ended up having as well is whereas they were winning these fights, they weren't winning them enough. And that's because there was a lack of damage coming out from the mid lane, from Tempt. He got behind in the laning phase because of these groupings that Venom Crest were doing early on. And he never quite got to the item set he needed to. So if he wasn't immediately on the engage at the moment the engage was happening, they just didn't have the damage to get a decisive victory. They got small wins here and there, but when there was a decisive victory in the team fight, it was entirely Venom Crest doing so. And I was saying I was worried about how they were going to look in the late game scenarios. Their composition is so plug and play in those scenarios mm. that so long as the game doesn't go on for too long to the point where Cassante just becomes invincible or Tempt catches up on items, they actually could execute a much simpler composition than what their opponents are running. And sometimes, sometimes that's all you need. So I think this is a really good draft that they did that covered mm. their weaknesses, played to their strengths, and they executed it beautifully and... Unfortunately, Lion's Creed were just never quite able to get back into the game. And, and they showed proudness by bringing Belveth yet again. It, it, it didn't work out the slightest yesterday, and they just said, you know what? It was not the champion. You just need to fix some things here and there. We got you. And to me, that just shows greatness, especially bringing it versus Lion's Creed. Like, that is beautiful, but more beautiful than that are the predictions oh, oh, yeah. well, let's 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 this show what we've all been waiting for really look oh at that oh jesus you got the perfect day yeah, my brain day. is so big it nice is pushing shot! against the inside of my skull that oh. puts him above you by the way so you two were actually even just before this now it's middle cotton 14 and you archer i'm on 13. i am on 17 so i'm completely fine so long as i'm not on the desk with Aragon. Who is the only one above me? But here, I am still on top. So I, you can have your tiny victory, middle cot, right? Because I still have the decisive one. All right, I'm the Venom Crest of this Venom Crest Lions Creed relationship. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait, oh, what come is on, this? Come on. Four correct it's predictions. It's still incorrect. Come what on, man. <laughs>
Uh, he oh. had zero unique mouses. Give no, wait, me no, yeah. the leaderboard of predictions. <laughs> I, I want to... Ah, oh, but get it over with! <laughs> wait, this isn't even what I'm looking at on the sheet here. Oh, my word. Wait, oh. what? Which one? Okay, oh, one of just, these is wrong. You are I, just this so is one mudded. The you are one. just so mudded, veteran, right now. Oh. It's their seat! <laughs> oh! We all thought, we all thought when Nord took that early victory, that early lead versus DMG, that it was going to be mudded cot coming out here at the end of the day. But I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, gentlemen. These have been the best two hours of my life. This has been absolutely fantastic. <laughs> How is Duckling on negative two? <sighs> Danish. You may take predictions, middle card. But at least I can do this. Okay, I can do this. Ooh, look, it's working. It's working. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Your mouse will hit the prediction. He actually would have the mouse this if is he a, just made this the, is the thing. I get he a perfect day on it. the day that I forget yeah. to do the prediction you for the mouse. You could all, middle cards. <laughs> And at the end of the broadcast, your mouse will look up and say, Yeah, fist, I can't stand it. <laughs> end it. End my misery. Show the standings of the teams as well. We got to see what happens. As this was a beautiful day. This was a beautiful day. Natives North in Venomcrest with Verdon are still tied up in first place, which is beautiful. Alliance Creed in fifth one, followed by Ruddy, and then Lightside and Dem DMG at the end of the standings this is only day four we still have a long way to go so don't worry about that and for those of you at home that actually have a working memory head on to twitter next week <laughs> and fill in your predictions <laughs> to win a wireless mouse you know <laughs> a mouse that doesn't need a cable coming in from steel cities themselves Edox 5 wireless mouse it's on the line every single week it's going to be delivered a new one the first one is already at someone's place the second one is not going for you middle cot especially because you live in the basement that's not a window that's a card box and i uh, <laughs> need to see you're bold there or broke i mean you got it right so i i uh, oh, yeah no genuinely five minutes Five. One of mine is gone now. Um, I had Lions Creed would lose oh. one game, but now they've lost two, so it's over. Yeah. yeah. One third is down. Fantastic stuff, but obviously. No. I'm this mad. I'm this mad. <laughs> you this can't keep pulling out madness. the tape measure, Archer. Um... What do you mean? <laughs> but it's no, no, my, 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 my last, my last bold and broke was that Lions Creed. Don't make playoffs. And as yeah. it stands... Stop! They're in the middle. As it stands, yeah. they are Stop. fifth position, actually... Archero. Don't you... It's looking likely. <laughs> it's looking likely. You know what? Yeah. Patrick was talking about this previously. But I'll actually take my... Oh, is it working? I don't think it's working. Oh, gosh, it's not working. I had a oh, lightsaber, no. but it's not oh, working. He had a bit, it! and it's not worked. It's uh, not your mouse! The, the face, so, the face I mean, just lovely Lion's today. I right there. <laughs> Like, you have you have a bit, you have a plan, you have it all worked out, and then when the day comes, you, you just lose to Lightside and the Venom Crest, you know? Sometimes it does be that way. Like Final words! Yeah, I mean, for me, it's really interesting that we always end up in the position in the NLC where we have, like, four people basically dead even, and then someone basically trickling up there mm, on their yeah. tails. This time, though, it's Lion's Creed, so it still feels like... Even though they've lost twice now, one of the losses was to Venom Crest, who a lot of people did expect, well, only, only middle card actually predicted, um, to, to be able to take the win here. Um, the other one to light side, you have to think they can still prove that was just an aberration. And if they do prove that, we're basically in a five-man race for that playoff spot. But as is, there's a, clear, there's a clear pack, and no one's fully separated away from them yet. So the next weeks are still going to be really interesting. Middle cut. Lovely. It's, Good it's job. Every, it's Great. everything that you'd ever want. It, it, it's NLC. And yeah, it's looking incredibly competitive. And whilst Lions yeah. Creed have had no two week, very surprisingly to most people, um, they still have that ability <laughs> on the roster. They still have that ability to put themselves back in that race. And so I think as we get later on to later on into the split, I'm expecting there to be some differentiation between the teams, but I would absolutely love it if we're coming into like week six, week seven, and it's still this close. 
I would love to see that because that actually is NLC at the bottom of our hearts. I love it. And so far, it has been a pleasure to be with you all, even though most of our desks are based in incoherent noises um, <laughs> and a lot of shouting. And somehow <laughs> it still works. So I don't know if you're capable back at home to join us for week three. I don't know if you need psychological uh, help or something like that. But join us for week three of the NLC. We'll be back back on Wednesday and Thursday. You know it. Keep climbing and I'll see you soon. Why is my lightsaber not working? Oh, it's just, I mean, you've just been absolutely mudded here. Like, just, it happens to every it man, Ultron. It happens to every man. <laughs>